What's going on, everybody? YouTube world. Here's this little Baofeng DMR radio. And uh, Butterbean there, he put out a pretty cool video uh, kind of explaining a little bit about DMR. <clears throat> he might, you know, understand a little bit better than I do. Uh, you know, he has a, has a license and all that, so... Um, and that's the only thing I could think of that is different, is he has a license and I don't, so. You know, these, I don't understand if, uh, I think the DMR standard is different here in the states versus uh japan or whatever but you know he had a moto turbo radio or whatnot and had it on dmr and you know it works great and and all that so i think what i'm gonna do he had a pretty cool scanner his was a handheld i think but it was one of those whistler dmr uh scanners and the audio was a little bit crummy. I mean, you know, kind of sounded like an old Nextel two-way or something, but uh, definitely would work for what I'm trying to do. Because basically I just want to scan for DMR in my area. So <clears throat> instead of going through the whole process of, of, you know, putting the program in and going through and changing everything and this, this, and this. Because I, I don't care about transmitting. I, I'm not going to transmit DMR. It's not for me. The only thing I wanted to do is hear the Michigan State uh, uh, statewide DMR and, and, and uh, the ones here in town. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not going to buy a Motorola uh, radio to do that. So, um, it's a little bit confusing. I don't quite understand it, but I believe that that's part of the problem. I mean, you can program it up and down, left and right, and tell it to do this and tell it to do that. Um, I understand that. And then, you know, if, if you miss one thing or you input the wrong radio code or the wrong radio ID because <laughs> see the radio has to have an ID too um, it has to the radio has to identify itself to the system so each radio ha would have a different ID I have a radio but I can only set it I can probably set the ID but It will only work with the another radio that I set that same ID to. So it's basically like a fleet, like a fleet of radios. You know, you have one master unit, and this is the ID. Then you have as many others that you wish to have, and each one of those radio IDs will be a little bit different. Another good thing about DMR is, is that you could make like a call, like a, like a phone call almost, and it will be uh, coded. Um, that was another good thing with DMR. You could, uh, you know, put in a radio ID of the radio you're trying to get and then call it. Um, these these Baofengs don't do that as much as the other ones do, but... Uh, <laughs> like those TYT uh, <clears throat> 380 or whatever, they can do that. Another misconception that I, I feel is DPMR, is, which just means digital. <clears throat> digital, personal, whatever you want to call it. It's slightly different than regular DMR. It uses a different time slot. 
now if you don't know what time slots are well you have to you have to read because there's there's two different time slots and they tdma and and different things you know so it gets it gets complicated real quick if if you don't understand what you're doing and it may sound like i know what i'm doing but i i I don't know what i'm doing i'm just telling you guys what i read and uh what butterbean was talking about so you know i would like to see dmr but there's a couple downfalls like i said that the quality of the audio is a bit crummier so you know, if it was a Baofeng, it's going to sound different than a Motorola. Motorola should sound pretty good. I mean, it should sound, you know, like you're having a cell phone conversation. Because that's basically what it is. I mean, when you think about it, that's really all it is. You know, they were doing this way before cell phones probably even were thought of coming out with. You know what I mean? A cell phone is nothing but a glorified radio transmitter in your hand <clears throat> it still puts out a signal to a tower and then out to the network that always always never changes but i, I like dmr but i'm not going to go out and get a technician's license just so i can operate ten, uh, dmr and you might even have to take it one step further to do DMR. I'm not quite sure on how the FCC classifies it. Um, if it's DMR on MERS frequencies, well, I mean, they basically can't do nothing about MERS frequencies. It's, it's a one one watt only, and, you know, one watt on FM is not going to go very far. Mile, maybe. But... It's just kind of confusing, and what I was trying to do is make the radio into a scanner, but I might as well just buy a three hundred four hundred dollar scanner. Well, I don't think they're that much, but i th- I think they're right around three hundred dollars and just go from there because the scanner is already programmed with you know thousands of color codes and all this other stuff so when the system keys up, the scanner will be able to scan through what's in its memories and say, oh, hey, you know, I know what this is, and it'll tell you, and then you can save it and and so on, because that's really what I was trying to do. So I can go on and on and on about DMR and post tons and tons of videos, but, you know, there's other there's others out there that are a little bit more qualified and have a little bit more experience with this sort of thing than I do. So, you know, I was basically just venting frustrations because of the fact that I think the problem doesn't lie with the programming and it doesn't lie with the radio. It has to do with has to has to do with compatibility the u.s version of dmr is different than the european version of dmr you see what i mean that's the difference you may be able to change that programming through chirp whatever you want to use but they're still not compatible if i wanted to take this radio and listen to dmr in japan it probably would have no problem decoding it because that's where the radio originated from. But over here in the States, it's basically rendered useless because it's not the U.S. standard of DMR. It's available to the public, but you have to buy like a Motorola radio or buy a scanner that will scan for that. You really can't just go into the store and say, hey, I want to buy a DMR radio like you do with these Baofangs. Because it just, it, you'll have a hard time getting one. And I, and I doubt anybody would sell you one without a license. So, you know, have to be a little bit careful. But thanks for viewing. Check out Butterbean. And this video is about to come to an end. Thanks for viewing. Stay tuned for the next one.